Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is September 23rd, 2022. We are in the New Testament, and we are in the book of Luke. And we're going to read chapter 16, verse 1, to chapter 17, verse 10 today. All right. So Luke, at this point of his gospel, it, he still has us with Jesus sparring with the Pharisees and going back and forth. And he's calling them out, calling out big time. And they know it, and they're getting angry at him angrier. I guess they started off kind of angry at him. And, he, and, and the thing that Jesus is trying to get these people and the disciples to see is, is that the Pharisees have gotten to the point where they've just kind of abandoned God entirely. I mean, they're still doing what they're supposed to do, and, 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 and they think they're doing what Moses told them, but they've gotten rid of God a long time ago, and it's all about themselves and making themselves look good. Uh, it's about making themselves rich and fat and, and holier than everybody else. And, and it gets to the point where Jesus is going to tell them a story about a, a man named Lazarus who's died in his servant and says, hey, you know what? If you're rich and you, you got your reward here, so you're going to hell because you already got your reward. You're, you know, if you want to have an eternal reward, you got to follow God and what he wants. You've got to be kind to people. You've got to be nice to people. You have to be that servant to people. Uh, and then he starts talking about forgiveness and faith and duty. And that's pretty much where this section ends. So we're going to read Luke chapter 16, verse 1 to 17, verse 10 today. He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig, I'm ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill, sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, And how much do you owe? So he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by, by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts, for what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tittle of the law to fail. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to, in Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torment in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. And he said, I beg you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded through one 
risen from the dead. And he said to the disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea and it would obey you. And which of you having a servant plowing or tending sheep will say to him when he has come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat. But will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk. And afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank that servant? Because he did the things that were commanded him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. May God bless the reading of his word, and may God bless you. Bye.